this is the title of this video is a message to Israel and all night um, well this morning I got this message with the with a few other messages but this one is um, important to the Israel nation okay so we're gonna be in Ezekiel 18 1 through 17 I want to say a quick prayer before we start. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this message. Thank you for your insight. Thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for your understanding, Lord. Lord, I ask that the same insight, the same understanding that you gave me in this scripture, you give it to everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord. Lord, I ask that this word be edifying to those who hear it, edifying to me and edifying to them as well, Lord. Lord, thank you. We praise you. We are ready. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so, um, so, yes, so Ezekiel 18, verse 1 through 17. So we're going to start, okay? And before I start reading, I just want to say that this, these verses is a direct, um, okay, because there's a conversation, like, about the Old Testament and the New Testament, right? And, for, and the, these verses bring in the understanding that both still apply, that both apply. The Old Testament and the New Testament applies to our forward movement in the um, promises of God in the obedience of God and in our um, transformation into the kingdom of God. Okay? The word of Lord came unto me. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, so so I want us to always pay attention to this, right? Let's let's pay attention to the word of the Lord came unto me again. Because a lot of the times we don't really pay attention to um to scripture and what it's saying in like the actual words that are being said in scripture when we are reading it right so when we see that the prophet is saying the word of the lord came unto me saying so that gives us an idea of what um what is actually being said what information what confirmation what did they get what did the prophet get that made it into the bible that made it significant to scripture right so when you see the word of the Lord came unto me saying, this is Ezekiel saying, I'm talking right now. What mean ye that you use the proverb concerning the land of Israel saying, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge? Whew. Okay, so I'll be like, okay, so. So the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Okay, so you can imagine how sour grapes are, right? Sour grapes might make your stomach a little bit sick. Sour grapes are like, they probably don't taste that well. They So understand that the children of Israel have been through a lot throughout society, throughout history, throughout history, history. The children of Israel have been through a lot, right? So the forefathers, the, the father, the ancestors, yes, bitter, bitter, right? So bitter, bitter, yes, bitter, bitter, bitter. So bitter, sour grapes are bitter, yes, so they're bitter. Oh my God, thank you. It's Exodus, Israel, thank you. So the sour grapes are bitter, right? And um, the children's teeth are set on edge. So our pain and our suffering is passed down from one generation to, to the next generation if we don't decide to heal. If we don't take the initiative to heal in that generation, then it passes down to the next generation, right? So because of what our people have gone through, we are mad, right? We are mad and the teeth are set on edge. We are mad, right? The children's teeth are set on edge. So, to, in understanding that God knows how we feel, we have to like take the initiative to move into the promises of God. So that brings me to the next verse. As I live, said the Lord God, ye shall not have occasion anymore to use this proverb in Israel. So God is saying like on his life, 
on his life, y'all not going to have to deal with this anymore, right? And in scripture, it has been written over and over what needs to be done for things to change in our favor. But we keep on getting caught up in the same situation over and over because we fall at the hands of the enemy. The enemy is spiritual. We have to understand that we have to guard ourselves through to against spiritual warfare because what's happening, what people are falling for, why they are remaining bitter, why they are unable to heal is because of spiritual warfare, right? And we are not guarding ourselves properly against spiritual warfare. Therefore, we are falling for it. So um, as I live, said the Lord, ye shall not have occasion anymore to use this proverb in Israel. God is saying we're going to do away with this proverb because this is not this is not what I wanted for my children. This is not um, what what is going to um, this is not how it's going to end. This is not the final destination, basically, right for for Israel. Okay, so um, four says, "Behold, all souls are mine, as the as the soul of the Father. So also the soul of the Son is mine." The soul that sinneth, it shall die. So like I said before, we all belong to God. We are all under the jurisdiction and the um, covenant of God. The covenant that God has had with our forefathers, we are under it, right? We are, um, we by his grace, by his grace and his mercy and his love and his compassion, we are still here. Because a lot of, we have to be realistic, a lot of other um Ethnic groups and races have been killed off completely. Like, we have to, like, tell the truth about the situation. So we are here, and we are we have multiplied, and we are um, growing, and we overcame slavery, and we are um, economically independent, really, if we just use the resources properly. We are, um, we are at an advantage compared to a lot of other um race cultures and groups of people groups of people right so that speaks to us being here that speaks to us still being here and being alive today and that is a reason for that but let's make sure that we do not get so um cocky about us still being here don't think that we are here because of our own strength because of our own cleverness because of our own um ability to survive we are here because of jesus we are here because of the Bible. We are here because we were brought over on a slave ship named Jesus. We are here because all we had was a Bible to read during slavery. We are here because our mothers knew how to pray um, for our fathers. We are here because we, are, we have promises on our lives that we need to collect on. But we have to turn away from our wicked ways and become the generation that chooses to do something different become the generation that's going to um, walk into the promises of God without getting caught up in the snares of life, without getting tempted by the, the serpent, without, without forfeiting our promises because we just can't see straight, right? So um, they said at the end that, they said at the end God is going to pour out his, his spirit. He is going to pour out his spirit, but we have to be able to receive his spirit. The, the, there is a, um, everybody is highly spiritual right now because it's for preparation to receive the Spirit of God. Our searching and, and the reason why we want the answers and the coming together of different Israelite groups all over the world is because this is time. It is time now. It is time, right? So um, God is trying to give us His Spirit, His understanding, His knowledge, his wisdom. He's not trying to have us lean on our own understanding. He's trying to give us his wisdom. He's, so he said he's going to pour out his spirit. So for him to pour out his spirit and for us to be able to receive it and be filled with it, we have to empty out all the things that have that, that have made our forefathers bitter and that's making us sit up and be on edge and understand that God is in control and trust every word of scripture and do all of this in love and righteousness. And then we're going to talk about that further, okay? So behold, all souls are mine as the soul of the father. So also the soul of the son is mine. So that means that God had his hand on you. He's going to have his hand on your children and he had his hand on your forefathers. So don't worry about, don't think 
that your um, grandparents and your grandfathers, they became slaves because all they knew was Jesus. That is not it. God is in control. He has been in control. He will always be in control. So that is what we need to understand, right? So um, as I, um, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. So now we're going to talk about the different decisions that we make in our lives um, with each generation. One generation passes away and another comes. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right, and hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house that, oh, okay. So, but if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right, and hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, neither hath defiled his neighbor's wife, neither hath come near to a menstruous woman. So, in this verse, we see there's a combination of physical sin and spiritual sin, right? We see there is, um, because what we have to understand, Israel, what we have to understand is that the combination between the Old Testament and the New Testament teaches one how not to sin spiritually, right? To be transformed spiritually. If you have a sinful nature, you will sin. But to transform your, from your nature, you will not sin, Right? So these verses can include sinful nature and acts of sin so that we can see neither one is less than the other one. Neither one is um, more serious or less serious than the other one. <sighs> but if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right, so lawful and right, we see lawful and right. We have what is written. And um, according to Moses, the laws of Moses, and what is right. So it can't be either or. It has to be both. Lawful and right, right? So that's what Jesus represented. He, he represented doing the right thing no matter what, no matter what the law was. He did the right thing. So him healing on the Sabbath because someone needed healing, it was done because someone needed healing, even though... So we have to know that we have to do the right thing no matter what we have to be a good person righteousness requires you to be a good, good person yes so yes exodus it was it is inherited through a perpetual cycle of ignorance and disobedience so if it's inherited through a perpetual cycle of ignorance and disobedience meaning we have a responsibility to stop it with this generation and to teach other generations i mean we have to teach our brothers and sisters where they're going wrong right but for us to teach where they are going wrong we have to first be purified and come into the identity of christ because we cannot teach from a place of bitterness as well so that's what's happening the bitterness is teaching bitterness and we are getting even more bitter because people are not taking the responsibility and what the necessary steps to heal from all of that so that they can edify other people in the because that is how um that's why Jesus came for the lost sheep of Israel. Because the lost sheep of Israel are are probably a little bitter, a little set on edge, right? So Jesus came for the salvation of their hearts because in if you are already a chosen generation, a peculiar people, if you are already this and, and that, all you need is to do is surrender to Christ, to, to a pure heart, right? So that you can exist within your purpose because your purpose is to fulfill the covenant of your forefathers basically and god is going to bless you because god is going to fulfill his promises he's going to do his thing so all you have to do is um follow the instructions given to us in scripture in regards to um accepting christ accept christ accept christ and that is the only thing that's keeping us from moving forward that so many different groups of Israelites are not able to accept Christ. Not talking about Christ in the, because they are dealing with the concept of following the laws of Moses. How the Torah, because it's rooted in bitterness. It's rooted in your, your teeth being set on edge. You have to heal. You have to heal and come forth stronger and, and mightier. And, 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 you know, David just killed the, the giant with the rock the rock it represents the jesus that that jesus is the rock right it rep that 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 story is so famous 
That story is so well known because it is a testimony to how if we just accept Christ into our hearts, we will be strong enough, united enough. Clearly, um, our vision will be clear enough to slay the giant, which is, you know, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, as I live, said the Lord, okay, so behold, the souls are mine, but if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right, right, lawful and right, and righteousness is the root, right is the root word, word, the root word of righteousness, and, and, not, and hath not eaten upon the mountains. Let's talk about the mountains. So the mountains is like a physical um, thing that we can see, right, that was made by God. The mountains is high, right? Mountains are on earth. We see it, though, when we drive in, we see the mountains, right? But it's a rock. It's a big rock. But we can see the mountain, and it's big to us. It's mighty to us. Hath not eaten upon the mountain. So um, a lot. So what's been given us for exchange for our soul is the, physicality, the physical reward of life. The physical rewards of life, right? So we get caught up in the physical rewards of life and we ignore the spiritual rewards of life and um, that God has promised us. And, and as soon as we exchange our, our commitment to God for a mountain or for something that's been given to us, we kill everything that um, was promised to us. Everything because there's no limit to our development. There's no limit to our understanding. There's no limit to our creativity. There's no limit to what we can do. To there's no limit to what we can do to help our people. But because we are so hungry, because we want something to satisfy us, to, to reward us, to validate our, our worth on earth, we go for things that is offered to us before we get to the reward of Christ, before we get to the promises of God. And that's how we end up being controlled in our delivery of whatever we're trying to do to help our people. That's what happens. That's what, Everybody worry about where the black leaders go, where all the leaders that's what happens. The leaders get caught up in the political side of things and someone offers them a reward for what their what their gift is, a physical reward for what they're and then they're not able to manifest the fullness of the promises of God. Yes, so in the rock, right? Jesus, we have to trust in the rock, right? But it says and not he and hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel. So Exodus Israel, like precept upon, upon precept, right? You would look at it like in the context of what the message is giving you. Because if you don't, then you will take it out of context, right? And you'll be like, okay, so understand that this is a message from today. And this is the living word of God. So, so this is the message that I'm getting from this scripture right here. So hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel. So if you put those two sentences together, these are the things that um, Israel idolized, right? We idolize um, freedom. We idolize um, dominance. We idolize, we're looking at other things. We're looking around and we're like, this is not fair. You know, this is how it's supposed to be. This is not how it's supposed to be. We're looking at the physicality of the messages of God. And it's actually spiritual in which we need to be transformed. We, we know we are promised to be the head and not the tail. But we can't focus on being the head and not the tail um, over focusing, seeking ye first the kingdom of God. So yes, the mountain is the pinnacle of our faith, right? The kingdom of God. So seeking that, seeking the kingdom of God over the things that were promised to us in God and in the Bible and knowing that we'll get them anyway is speaks to the strength of our faith speaks to the level of our understanding speaks to the purity of our heart because we surrender our own ideology of what's going to happen and we surrender it to god and we become like little children again like the bible says okay so but if a man be just and do that which is life for us so hath not eaten upon the mountain neither hath lifted up his eyes to idols of the house of um israel an idol is anything that you put before god Anything that you put before being righteous and doing the right thing, right? And um, idols of the house of Israel, neither have defiled his neighbor wife, neither have come near to a menstruous woman. So these are the physical manifestations of sin, right? 
So you can't be like doing abominations and not and making sure you not sleep with your neighbor's wife and think that you are living righteously. You can't be in your heart bitter and mean and angry and, and not sleep with your neighbor's wife and feel like you are living righteously. It is in your heart. It is the heart that needs to be circumcised. That's why Jesus came for the heart, um, to circumcise the heart of, of men versus the skin, the flesh. Because at first the mark was the, the circumcision of the flesh. But um, when Jesus came, he's saying circumcise your heart. And not to say it didn't take away from the circumcision of the flesh. But you're, in circumcising your heart, you circumcise your flesh. Because like I said before, your body is not going to let you sin against your spirit. Your body is not going to accept sinful nature if your spirit is in alignment with God. So, um, neither have lifted up his eyes to the idols, defiled his neighbor's wife, neither have come near to a menstruous woman, right? And that's probably deep too, but I don't, that's not the message that I got this morning. So that's the thing. This is the living word of God. So it is ever changing in, in its delivery. The, the, the message is still the same, but in the specific delivery of what's being said, what God wants to share with us, that can change. Okay, and hath not oppressed any, but hath restored to the debtor his pledge. Now, let's look at his pledge. His pledge, right, is the covenant. We have a covenant with God to be a royal priesthood, to um, bless many nations, right? But we can't do that if we can't rise above what's been given us, given to us um, during this time. We can't do that. We can't bless many nations if we can't see and be and given our direction from God to go forward in his promises, our strategy comes from God. Our, our information comes from God. Our, the blessing will come from God, right? But we have to change our hearts first because he's going to give us the direction. He's going to give us what we need to go forward, but we need to pray. We need to worship. We need to start doing his work. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about doing his work because I think that's where... We have things um, confused as far as serving God. We think serving God is lip service, and it's more than lip service. So let's talk about what being in Christ is really about, okay? And hath not um, and hath not oppressed any, but hath restored to the debtor his pledge, kept the covenant, hath spoiled none by violence. We are allowing our people to just go around and kill people. We are allowing this to happen. Nobody is saying like, okay, maybe I need to stop our young men and our young women are like doing just, it is happening. It's happening. And we are. So yes, the concept of black on black crime does need to be looked at. It does need to be looked at. Like I'm saying it from, I'm saying it. Yes, it does. That doesn't take away everything else that's being done. That doesn't take away um, the fact that other things are not right, but for the edification of your people, for the obedience of your covenant, you need to talk to your, your little cousins and them. Little Ray Ray and them got to calm down, okay? Like, no, it's not okay. And we can't keep ignoring it because we don't live that lifestyle. We can't keep ignoring it because we're not a part of that group. We have to understand that it's affecting us. It is affecting us, all of us, okay? So have given his bread to the hungry and have covered the naked with the garment. Have we done that? Are we doing that? So we're talking about generation and generation, right? What separates one generation from the other? And and this scripture is saying that um, this is the just, right? The just soul shall live. This is the just soul shall live. Because the last verse in um, 1 and 4 says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. So we have to pay attention to the soul. It shall die. Your soul shall die. So a lot of us are alive and walking around and breathing and talking, but we are dead inside. We are dead inside, and that is a problem. And that brings me to Colossians. Let's go to Colossians 3.3. 3. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. So we are dead without um, a pure spirit. We are dead without uh, a pure heart. To be able to serve humanity, we are dead, right? Spoiled none and hath not oppressed any and hath restored the debtor his pledge, hath spoiled none by violence, hath given his bread to the hungry and hath covered the naked with the garment. And people who are naked are vulnerable. 
the naked is a vulnerable population it's who's vulnerable who do we help who who do we cover that's vulnerable because a part of israel is being a, a royal priesthood is being a bless it's to bless many nations and if we can't just bless one person how are we going to bless one nation and being a blessing is a blessing right if your heart is in the right place you are you think of it as being a blessing is a, you'll be blessed by being a blessing and that's how you feel right but we have to change our heart to be able to feel that way and think that way because that is where our abundance come from we are not going to be um abundantly blessed if we're gonna just hoard all of it and keep it ourselves because that's not the purpose of our existence that's not the purpose of our people our the purpose of our people is to bless many nations okay so hath not oppressed any, hath restored to his debtor, covered the naked in garment. He that hath not given forth upon usury, neither hath taken any increase. So we're not given to gifts. So that's he has not given forth upon usury. We're not giving to get or taking any increase. We're not getting for what we're giving either. We're not giving to get and we're not getting for what we're giving. Because that is where how we got we get caught up. It's when we decide that we're going to take something in regards to what God has given us. We are selling our gift. We are we are selling our birthright, right? And that is the same thing as Esau. And God hated Esau. So if we are selling our birth, that is the significance of Esau in um, scripture, right? He sold his birthright for some pottage to um, Jacob. Right. And, and God didn't like that type of character. He don't like that type of mindset. And that's where we because our our um, our abilities are limitless. Our abilities are limitless. Our um, we only need validation from God to have the promises on our lives to be fulfilled. We only need validation from God. So that's what we should see. We should seek validation from God. Right. And have the press. So um, he that hath not given forth upon usury, neither had taken any increase, that had withdrawn his hand from inequity, had executed true judgment between man and man. Okay, so these are all the characteristics of the soul that will live, the soul that will have life and have it more abundantly, right? So it is important that you withdraw your hand from inequity. In withdrawing your hand from inequity, you are making a conscious decision, a choice not to do anything wrong because it's wrong. You are making a decision to do the right thing. No one is giving you a reward or punishing you if you do the wrong thing. It's not That's not the type of decision that you have to make in life. You have to make a decision to do the right thing because it's the right thing. Because you are a child of God. Because you want to walk a righteous path. That is how you have to live. That is, how, that is what has to be established amongst our people. Amongst the youth right now right now that they need to do the right thing and walk a righteous path no matter what because it's the right thing okay so withdraw his hand in equity has executed true judgment um between man and man true is righteousness true is righteousness true is the right thing true is the teaching of christ because that's why jesus is the truth the way and the light, the light, the truth, the way Jesus is because his teachings is teaching us how to be holy, how to be pure, how to love no matter what, how to do the right thing no matter what. So when we adapt to those teachings, then we come into an understanding of what's really right and what's really wrong versus um, making up our own ideology of right, what's right and wrong or having bits and pieces of scripture that we go so um instead of having bits and pieces of scriptures that we go by we lean on on the understanding of god throughout the whole scripture the whole bible the because we're not going to get an understanding until we apply the new testament to the knowledge of the old testament i promise you you're not going to get a full understanding because what was left is the father the son and the holy spirit what Jesus left with us through his teaching was the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is going to give us the um, insight and the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding to be able to comprehend scripture on a whole nother level. That's why it's a double-edged sword. Um, that's why it says, I will come against him with the sword of my mouth. 
because the Bible cuts when it's understood in the full spiritual sense in which it was given. Right, but we want to like take shortcuts and argue about it, and that speaks to the fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. That is what's happened. That's a manifestation of that. So if we don't put enough tension into healing from our past, into becoming um, new again in the renewing of our minds, not being conformed to this world, then we can't move forward. We have to collectively make it a task, make it a responsibility of Israel to heed to the teachings of Jesus Christ, to understand the power of the teachings of Christ and the power of the name Jesus. And let me keep going. Okay, so he had not given for usury, usury, so he has not taken anything for giving his gift, neither had taken any increase that hath withdrawn his hand from inequity. So, um, so when you don't take increase, when you don't take um, reward for your gift that God has given you, because if God gave you a gift, the reward comes from, comes from him also. And the reward from God is so much bigger than what man can give you. Man can't give you anything for your gift, not the gift that God gave you. He can give you something, but it's not, it's not in exchange for the gift that God gave you. It's not, it's not a proper um, exchange. And that's the significance of Esau selling his birthright. So, um, hath execute, executed, hath walked in my statutes and hath kept my judgments to deal truly. He is just, he shall surely live, said the Lord, God. So one thing about living a just life and doing the right thing, your soul prosper. Your soul prosper. You are okay. Like, it's okay. The, the, the powerful words, it's okay. Letting stuff go and saying it's okay is powerful. It gives you power. It gives you peace. And peace, power comes with peace. Like, it gives you peace to say it's okay to let things go, to not try to control everything, to not get mad at people for doing you, doing you wrong or doing something wrong to you. Understand that they are people. People are people, and everything that you go through in life is to teach you how um, it is to remind you. So today I was thinking about pain. And I was like, pain is so, like, it's, it's even in, in the state that I feel today, even in the way that I feel, like, at peace and happy, it is still, pain is still relevant to me today. The pain in my life, everything that I've gone through in my life is still relevant, but it's not relevant for the same reasons. It's relevant for me to remember what I've gone through and to keep the memory of it for, so that I can always have empathy toward others. So that I can always know and understand that others might be going through something that I have gotten through. So I need to talk to them about what I have gone through. So that is the, um, that's the understanding of biblical scripture and the entirety of scripture from the Old Testament to the New Testament. That Israel had to go through something. And the memory of it is for you to understand that you are capable of getting through it. Not so that you can be bitter about it. So that you can understand that you have gone through and you have came out and you will get to the promises of God. So that's what we have to understand. Okay, so um, he walketh in my statues and hath kept my judgment. And my statues, listen to my statues. My statues, Christ statues, God statues are, are righteousness. It's righteousness, right? And hath kept my judgments. And the judgments from the Old Testament to the New Testament, the Old Testament was you would die for sin, for committing sin, for, for making a bad decision, you would die. And nothing is that off about the New Testament to where you don't understand how Jesus came and gave grace. I don't understand how you don't get that. Jesus came and gave grace. So if you are denying that Jesus existed because of your own idolatry, of your own consciousness, the idolatry, the idolatry of your culture, the, idol the idolatry of the Hebrew, the idolatry of the um, the essence of, of the origination of your, your culture. Like, if that's idolatry. Anything that you, you're, you're neglecting Christ, you're rejecting Christ because um, it doesn't fit into the box of your understanding. And that is an abomination. So, there is no reward for that. There is no, you are, you are on the other side. You are the unjust soul, right? So have walked in my statue, have kept my judgments, and deal truly, he is just. Truly, truly, truly. He shall surely live, said the Lord God. Now truly, now understand there's a difference between fact and um, 
theory and and all of that, right? So fact is some something that's able to be proved by man. Like so and people get so caught up on facts because they are so limited to their own understanding. They are not they're not able to see that God is an entity that cannot be defined. And he is bigger than what we can see or what we can comprehend because his thoughts are not our thoughts and, and his ways is not our ways. So he's going to move differently than what we understand. But your faith, like the brother said, the, your faith is the pinnacle of your um, your walk with Christ. You have to have faith because it is the, the one thing that is going to hold you. It's the rock of Jesus Christ. It's the rock of purity. If you have faith, then you will stand your ground in your in your purity, in your peace in your wholeness, in your holiness. But if you don't have faith, you can be tossed to and from, rocked back and forth, um, moved, and you don't want that. We can't be moved. As a, as a nation of, of a, royal, a royal priesthood, you cannot be able to be moved. Royalty is not moved. Royalty is not manipulated and, and told something and, and mind changed. That's not how royalty works. You, you should not be moved. Right, so um, he that have not given for you, wait, okay. If he begot a son that is a robber, if he beget a son who is a robber, a shedder of blood, and that doeth the like to any one of these things, and that doeth not any of those duties, but even hath eaten upon the mountain and defiled his neighbor's wife, hath oppressed the poor and the needy, hath spoiled by violence have not restored the pledge and restored the pledge okay so we're talking about the, that if that same son that same son that was um that was just right the same son that was a just soul that was doing the right thing if that same person has a child and his son is not just right if he begot a son that is a robber a shedder of blood and that doeth the like to any one of these things and that doeth not any of those duties, but even hath eaten upon the mountains and defiled his neighbor's wife, hath oppressed the poor and needy, hath spoiled by violence, hath not restored the pledge, and hath lifted up his eyes to the idols, hath commit and hath committed uh, abominations. So this is um, the depiction of the unjust son. So there's one generation come and another generation passes away and another generation comes, right? This is happening over and over. And then you see this in the, um, so this is, the significance of this is related to the kings of Israel. How one king was just and the other king was unjust. And then the nation fell, the kingdom fell, and then here come another king, and then he make it better. That's what's happening. That's what happens in scripture, right? And the, the depiction of that, that no matter what, no matter what, who, what is done in the generation, that God promises still stand. His covenant still stands. So, um, so even so, but then we, but we, what we really have to pay attention to is the manifestation of the sinful nature of the unjust child, right? So, hath oppressed the poor and needy, hath spoiled by violence, hath not restored the pledge, and hath lifted up his eyes to the idols, hath committed abomination. Now, you see that these um, scriptures talk specifically about Israel, right? So don't think that um, only the only people who have oppressed people is Esau, right? So or whatever nation, whatever, whatever, right? So understand that we oppress people too. We oppress people too. Israel has oppressed people too. Um, the unjust Israel nation they have oppressed people too, right? So we can't be so haughty, so so high horse that we don't understand that nobody is perfect but Jesus. Hath oppressed the poor and needy, hath spoiled by violence, hath restored the pledge. So restored the pledge. Like there's a pledge, there's a covenant with God that um, for our forefathers made, and we are to restore it. We are to restore it into its right, rightful place, into its understanding, its rightful understanding. We are not taking the time to understand scripture in the way that we are supposed to because we are so busy proving our identity, which we do not have to do because we are who we are. We, we were who we were from the beginning of the Bible. There is nowhere in the Bible where we, are, we need to be reintroduced. We don't need to be reintroduced, okay? The, um, we are made in the image of God. Let's go with that. 
and that is in Genesis, okay? Everything else after that is what it is, and you will figure it out on the way. But if you can't start with that you were made in the image of God, and you get caught up in where the um, boat picked you up and dropped you off, then I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you can't get caught up in that. You have to stay with the ideology that you are made in the image of God, that you are a spirit in a body. You are a spirit having a human experience in a body. I said it. Okay. <laughs> Up his eyes to the idols and committed the abomination, hath given forth upon usury and hath taken increase. Shall he then live? He shall not live. He hath done all these abominations. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. So understanding his blood being upon him, mean, meaning he had free will. He was able to make a decision. He saw what happened to his previous generation and he has a right and he has the ability god has given him the ability to make a decision on to, to follow righteousness to be a good person to do the right thing to figure out the the um the lessons of the bible to to try to learn them on a deeper level past the physical understanding to try to get a deeper understanding so that the promises of god can be fulfilled in this generation right so have given forth upon you, surely have taken increase. So he did everything that the everything that the unjust, I mean the just um, child did didn't do. He did right. The unjust child did. So that's how we get to the generation after generation making bad decisions, not being held accountable, and then becoming bitter and having your seat your teeth um, set on edge when that was not the purpose. You have free will. Now, lo, if he beget a son that seeth all his father's sin which he hath done and considereth and doeth not such like so we have to understand like the new generation you have to look back on the old generation and that's why the scripture is so important because it is giving us the example of what not to do and what to do and if we are ignoring what not to do and we so worried about what god said about us because we so vain that we can't realize that for what God said about us to come true, we have to not do the things that the other people did to forfeit the promises of God. Like whatever was going on before God told Noah to go into the ark, let's not do that. Okay? Whatever what, <laughs> whatever was going on before um, would be the Sodom and Gomorrah, let's not do that. Right? So let's not do that. And so let's get that understanding before we get talking about how we're gonna the chariots is coming and all that and Esau gonna be destroyed. Let's let's get to the meat of what needs to be talked about first before we talk about all the promises. Okay, so if he beget a son that seeth all his father's sin which he hath done and considereth and doeth not such like that hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, hath not defiled his neighbor's wife, neither hath oppressed any, neither hath not withholding the pledge. So hath not withholding the pledge, right? And we talked about how the pledge is the covenant, right? The covenant that God has with our forefathers to do the work to do the work there is work involved in christ it is not something you just sit around oh holy 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 raising your hand no you don't those who say holy 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 i get away from me because i will not know you those who are in christ are going to live a christ-like life like christ went around like he traveled healing people helping people that's what his whole purpose was so um until we understand that our walk with christ is to bless many nations not for us to be blessed then we can't really move forward so the message here is to become a royal priest priesthood to to get ready to bless many nations to get ready to be a blessing to many nations and don't worry about usury or or getting to give or receiving for what the gifts that god has given to you the promises that God has given to you is not going to materialize like the promises of man. So we can't hold them under one jurisdiction. We have to understand that there's going to take work for the milk and honey to flow in the land of the righteous or the kingdom of God. Okay, so we have to like really be better people. Focus on being better people, not bringing people into the truth. Understand bringing them, them into the truth requires bringing them up out the streets too. Okay? Okay? Okay. So, um, 
that has not eaten upon the mountain, neither have lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house, have not defiled his neighbor's wife. So you cannot um, have a sinful nature, right? Or commit sin. So that is the significance of that. You, it's not okay to have a sinful nature or commit sin, right? So it's not, you are not forgiven by Christ because you say, I'm, I'm a, and you keep doing the same thing over and over. Yes, Israel, in that sense, you are right. You cannot commit sins and keep committing sins and just because the grace of jesus is here that you just say i'm sorry and you keep doing the same thing no that is not how this goes the blood that's why it says in 313 um his blood shall be upon him so every sin that we commit in our lives everything that we do that is not wrong it manifests right it manifests in us it goes with us we carry it with us right but there's salvation in Jesus. That's why Jesus says, go and sin no more. Because you cannot keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting God to forgive you because Christ exists. That is not how it works. You are doing, you are hurt, harming yourself every time you sin. Every time you commit a sin, you are sinning against your own self. Okay? So we have to um, understand that there is a duality of responsibility. Of your higher self and your lower self. And in attaining your higher self, you will not do the things that your lower self has been doing. Okay? So, um, neither hath oppressed any, hath withholding the pledge, hath not withholding the, the pledges to bless many nations. We, we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta become a blessing to be blessed. That's what it is. It's, I, we have more than we think we have, right? And we'll talk about that going forward for the next week. The next week going forward, you guys will see... Um, what we have to do to bless many nations, okay? Neither hath spoiled by violence, but hath given his bread to the hungry, and hath covered the naked with a garment. Those who are vulnerable, we have to help them. The vulnerable people need to be covered, right? And by the grace of God, we are able to cover them. So we should do it. And and I know you probably don't, you guys probably don't know what I'm talking about right now, but you will know what I'm talking about in the next coming week. And I'm going to need everybody help to get it done. It's not something that I can do by myself. It's a collective thing that we all have to do. That had taken off his hand from the poor and that had not received usury nor increase, had executed my judgment, had walked in my statutes. He shall not die for the inequity of his father. He shall surely live. So the, the um, most significant part is that he shall not die for the inequity of his father. So relax. Relax your teeth. Stop sitting on edge. Um, tell, I'm sorry that your father ate gra sour grapes, but we are a new generation. One generation has passed away. We are a new generation. We can change things. We can live. We can prosper. We can um, walk into the promises of God. And it's going to take the responsibility of holding the newer generation accountable to the in instructions of God to be able to make sure that they don't fall in the same traps as our previous generation. Okay? So I love you guys so much. That was Ezekiel 18, 1 through 17. I hope it's not too long. I have no idea what time it is. I'm sorry if I kept you guys too long. But um, the message here is that nothing is void. None of God's word is void. Not the Old Testament, not the New Testament. We are to come together in unity in Israel, in the understanding of Christ, in the spirit of Christ, in the purity of Christ, to become a royal priesthood, to bless many nations, right? That is what we are supposed to do. So to do that, we have to heal. We have to heal from our forefathers and then another thing about the ancestors coming back. The ancestors are back because our spirit is tired. The spirit that we hold within us is so tired of the, everything that's going wrong on earth and everything that is not right and not of God. And that is why there's a rise. That, that is why there is an increase in understanding, in seeking, in, in getting information. That is why things are changing. That is why the Israelites are standing up. They are the... Um, there is something, it's called the, um, I will, I will raise up a something, y'all, I'm, I'm going to get there, watch, one day I'm going to just be able to, but I will raise up a, anyway, 
you know what I'm saying? Like the Israelites coming to understanding of self is a very vital part of our forward movement into the kingdom of God, and it's happening. And it's happening all over the world, right? But we have to put things in perspective to be able to move together, uh, move forward together in unity. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna say a prayer. Um, like I do encourage you guys to accept Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Um, because there's peace you are expecting and accepting peace into your heart um, I, I do have an announcement I, this will be my last message on my page um, I will be moving everything to the church page so that um, we can I can keep everything in one place because it's getting a little confusing and we have other projects coming up that we need to do so everything will be on the church page this is my last message on my page and um, I please, if you guys are, um, if you want to just join the church and understand that the church, agape love is about working together with our people to be in alignment with the promises of God, with the instructions of God, with our abilities that God has given us to be a blessing, to be a blessing to many nations. So that is why it is growing the way it is growing. That is why it's going the way it's going because I'm in constant communication with God in, in regards to the forward movement and the forward progress of this church, of this vision that he has given me. So um, there is a need for a community to be built of people who want to serve others. And I understand that you don't want to just jump into something right away, but please keep uh, keep up with us. Please just join the church and just keep up with the different things we are doing so that if you do become interested at a later date, you can reach out and we can get started on different projects. We have um, mental health coming up, um, health and wellness and drug and rehabilitation pages coming up. And then we already have the youth pages, the women's group and the business center. So if you're interested or have anything that you want to contribute in regards to teaching people and helping people during this time, during this time, um, please reach out and, and so that we can set you up and get you started because autonomy versus shame and doubt and guilt is where we are in the process and we need people to take initiative and to want to just do their own thing and we are here to support you and what you are trying to do in the Christ-like love that God has instructed us to have. Okay, so um, I love you guys so much. I'm going to pray and um, see you guys tomorrow for service on Agape Love Church of Jesus Christ um, page, right? And we're going to have everything tomorrow, the youth and everything and testimonials. I'm going to do a testimony. Um, so I'm so excited about that. But everything will be tomorrow. And thank you guys for listening tonight. And I love you guys. And I thank you for just being with me on this journey, period, because it has been a journey. So um, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the love of our brothers and our sisters in Christ, Lord. Thank you for what you are doing, what you have done, and what you will do, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you so much, God. I can see what you're doing, Lord. I can see that the promises of God have not been aborted on our lives. I can see the blessing on our on the lives of my brothers and my sisters, Lord. I can see our way forward, Lord, and I just want you to stay with me, Lord. Stay with us and continue to guide us and, and encourage us, Lord. And anybody who is out there that needs the comfort and the love of Christ, the understanding of Christ, Lord, I ask that you touch them, Lord. Touch them in the name of Jesus, Lord. Touch their mind, their soul, their spirit, Lord. Bring them closer to you in understanding, Lord, and, and a surety that you are the truth, the way, and the light, Lord, that Jesus did die on the cross for our sins, Lord, that God, that you did send him, Lord, that that you are, that he is a messenger of you, Lord, that what he taught us was Bible, was truth, was what we have to adhere to to go forward, Lord. Lord, thank you, God, so much. Thank you, Lord, so much. I ask that you continue to guide us, Lord. Bring edification to all of those who are listening, all under the sign of my voice, Lord. And let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, loves, I love you guys so much. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Be blessed. Eat, eat healthy. Drink water. Love on your family. Keep a pen and paper nearby. He's pouring out his spirit. Um, whatever, you know, comes to mind. Know the difference between the small, still voice and, and, and your rambunctious thoughts. Um, good night. Be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you.